320 horsepower, no driver eight, 810 kilos. <laughs> Hey guys and welcome to Petroped and welcome to a very special video. Now you will probably know by now that I love driver's cars, the cars that engage you in the process of driving, the cars that have that visceral feeling to them. My favourite driver's car I've ever owned is a Caterham and I have a soft spot for a Caterham that's for sure. Behind me is a car that I know is going to tick all of my driving engagement boxes but I also think it's drop dead gorgeous. Ladies and gentlemen I give you the Gianarelli Design 1. <laughs> Pretty isn't it? One of my problems with this video is going to be there is so much to talk about with this car that I'm not sure I'm going to be able to squeeze it all in, but I'll do my very best. First off, I want to say a huge thank you to Gianarelli for letting me have access to the car. It's, it's their development car. It's the only one currently in the UK, and it's not one that's being banded around to anybody. So it's very, very special for me to be able to share this with you wonderful peddlers. A few years ago on the channel, I did a video about the top five prettiest cars ever made. And in that, I kind of gave away my where my deep love of the cars of the kind of 60s and 70s, the curvy things, the you know, beautiful things coming out of Alfa Romeo or Ferrari. And for me, I see those types of styling cues in this car all over the place. At the back end of the car, I see that kind of AC Cobra Coupe that you would see racing in the TT race at Revival. The front end just has all of these lovely, interesting things. I even see elements of really modern day cars like the Valkyrie from Aston Martin. So this car for me looks so retro, so historic, but it's a modern day contemporary car. In fact, Gianarelli have a phrase which I love. They call this car retro futuristic. I just love that. So let me walk you around a little bit about the car and tell you more about it. The first thing is there are actually three different styling options for this car. Um, it was designed originally as a car that had an aero screen and then you're going to like this. So if you want to get in the car, you've got no doors and all that kind of stuff. You basically lift up this carbon fibre coupe hood. Um, so you can have an aero screen, you can add a normal windscreen with a Targa rear end, you can replace that Targa rear end for a flat deck if you want. And then probably quite a good idea in the UK, you've got this carbon fibre hood that basically two Allen bolts either side and it you can remove it within sort of 10 to 15 minutes and you've got a little roadster or a full-on aero speedster style car. So you've actually got three cars in one. That's the first of the styling cues that I absolutely love. We'll talk about how you get into this car in a little while. But let's start our walk around of the front end of the car. Oh. Uh. What a, what a thing. So uh, where do we start with this? There are so many lovely things about the, f the design of the car, the sculpted lines. You first of all, you've got this lovely big flat splitter, but then the car kind of se starts to separate airflow and you start to see what's happening. You've got the front wheel obviously behind this lamp here, but you've got a, a massive great big airflow channel going through there, very reminiscent of kind of Valkyrie and starting to sculpt the aerodynamics. That front nose section for me has elements of Caterham in it. And interestingly, the designer Anthony Gianarelli is a big Caterham fan and owner and also a Donkvort as well. And the driving feel that those cars give, he wanted to really reflect in this, but then have a bit more practicality and a little bit more uh, of a car you can live with. You've also got huge great big intakes for some radiators there and underneath there is uh, some luggage space. There's some luggage space at the back as well. But when you kind of just look around the car, I don't, there's not an ugly angle on this car at all. It's just a beautiful sculpted thing. So let's kind of wander down the sides because what happens just here is incredible. Yes, 
this kind of aero blade here just you can you can almost watch while it's stationary the airflow going around and through this car you've got a channel that comes down the side door and then it goes you've got another channel that goes on the inside of the rear wheel and you've also got the intake for the engine at the back because unlike lots of cars of this style this is a mid-engine car obviously things like Caterham's and Dongvort's front engine but this is a mid-engine car we'll talk more about the engine in a moment but just this whole kind of it's just all theatre as we said the the way you get in the car you've got the lifting roof there and then the door it's just fantastic Yes, I will video myself getting in it in a while. But let's have a look at the back. Let's talk about the engine. So a beautiful looking car, but I'm sure you're all dying to know what's in here, what's in the engine bay. Well, in here we have a three and a half litre naturally aspirated V6 engine from Nissan out of the 350Z actually. It produces about 325 horsepower but what you need to remember is this car is really lightweight. I mean, we're talking, depending on trim levels, anything from 810 to 850 kilos, because there are some options around carbon fiber and things that will make the car lighter. We'll talk about optioning this car very shortly. Now, all of that is powered through a six speed manual transmission. There is an optional sequential box if you want. Um, if you want to access the engine bay, interestingly, in this current configuration, you do need to just lift the, um, roof and then you've got these kind of motorsport latches just holding down the deck over the engine bay and then in here you've got access to the engine but there's also another storage area uh, just there for uh, luggage and so on and the really cool thing is the air intake is literally right behind the driver's head so the induction noises this thing makes are quite insane um, and then the exhaust outlets are just there i think they look absolutely astonishingly good as well now, and getting in one of these, there is a trick to it because it is a bit tight in here. You can basically put your hands pretty much on any bits of the bodywork because they're all structural. Let me just slide your way in. Oh, now, it is quite tight in here. Um, now, there are things you can do for taller drivers. The pedal box can move back um, and so on. So, obviously, if I was buying one of these, I would have far, far more room than this. I'm just going to have to live with the fact that it's a bit squished in here for me and my gangly legs. But the standout feature in this interior is that open gated shifter. It is a work of pure art. It's beautiful in there. And apparently they'll even do one of those as like a, a desk ornament if you buy one of these. Um, it's a very, very simple stripped back cabin in here. I've got three dials in front of me. I've got a speedo on the left. I've got a rev counter in the middle and then the right hand dial has things like fuel and all of my different temperatures and that's it. There is an option for a stereo in here but there's no kind of head unit you just Bluetooth into it. You can option air conditioning in here as well but all the controls are tucked up underneath here. So all you have is this very clean uh, carbon fiber dash. The seats I think look stunning. And I'll tell you once we're out and about on the road, but they are pretty snug and you've got the nice Sabelt four point racing harnesses. And then when you drop the roof, it's really very snug in here, but I just cannot wait to get going. Now, in terms of spec, I've never seen a spec list as long with as many options on it as I have with this car. But the thing I love is Gianarelli have a stated quote, they will never make the same spec car twice. So if you choose one of the color palettes from their spec list, they then remove that color palette from the spec list. So nobody else can have that color car. If you, in terms of combinations of spec, if someone else has already done that combination of spec, they won't make it. Now there are millions of different possible combinations and permutations, but basically they want every single car to be completely unique. So when you buy one of these, the starting price is just a smidge under 90,000 pounds. You then start to add your different specs onto it. Um, and and we'll, I'll have a chat once we're out and about driving, I'll give you some examples of what you can uh, actually spec to make this car your own. But I feel like it's time to get some cameras set up and take this car up the road for a drive. So excited. I love driving cars with harnesses. Oh, shut the door and then you have to close this so the locking mechanism basically you just that's that locked 
Here we go. is going to be like because this thing is insanely loud now i want to try and approach this review in a sensible and mature way that went out the window the second i fired this thing up that throttle response is instant like i mean absolutely instant so the thing i love most about my caterham when i owned it is it just engaged you from the second you got in it be that putting on a racing harness firing it up the noises, the rattles, they're all part of the character. And the idea from Gianarelli is to take that and then just elevate it just a little bit more in terms of special feel and creature comforts. I've got a roof for a start, which is always a bonus. I love the stripped out interior. It's so focused on me, the driver. There's none of that big screen infotainment rubbish. If I want to listen to music, I can. I just Bluetooth my phone in and I use my phone. I quite like that. You know, we talk about special cars, about cars you'd have in your garage for a Sunday morning drive. Now, if, you, if you're gonna have one of those, that it has to be able to deliver special. You have to get in it and just, you know, I could drive down this road in a normal car and, and it would just be driving down a road. Drive it down in something like this. And it's a very different proposition. <laughs> Here we go. Heavy to start with on the turning, and then. these then I'll just quieten it down for a while so the base price is just shy of 90,000 pounds but then you start looking at the spec list and you can basically most of the components on the bodywork outside you can spec as carbon fiber or they do a full carbon fiber package now if you spec the carbon fiber package it's 14 and a half thousand pounds or if you want exposed weave carbon fiber it's 21,000 pounds and that includes all of the different bits, so you've instantly got a lighter car and if you've got exposed weave, it's going to look really cool. Um, if you want air conditioning, and on a day like today, I strongly advise you do, £4,000 option. The sound system, £2,000. If you wanted the SADEF sequential gearbox, which honestly, because this manual is so good, I'm not so sure I want one, because I've driven a... If you're going to track the car a lot, get a sequential gearbox, but it's the £30,000 option. So I just can't see the point in it, to be honest. Uh, traction control, £3,500. I would recommend that. You can turn it off, but at least then in the wet and so on, you've got that option. And then you can also fit a limited slip diff for about £3,500. And going from what benefit that gave me in my Mini, I'd probably look at that too. So you can go through and, and option one of these. The car we're sat in now is optioned at about £110,000. And if you really went to town on it, maybe one hundred and forty pounds to £150,000, which I know sounds like a lot of money. But they're only making 
499 of these, only 99 will come to the UK. And therefore, you're buying into a very exclusive car. And believe me, I've only been driving this car for a short period of time, and the looks you get are unlike any car I've ever driven. Now, I think I just ran over a 50 pence piece, and I'm pretty sure it was showing tails. I can honestly say, I've not driven many cars that sound as good as this. The induction noise is just insane. But it's when it comes on cam, it's just, it's just a magnificent, magnificent thing. And it just has a lovely feeling through the corners. And then, driver I did my advanced driving I've learned to do racing on track and got my racing license and all of those processes are about the joy for me of the mechanics of driving and the problem with modern day cars is electronics get in the way of that mechanics of driving this but it's a communicative one. It's talking to you, even at low speeds, what am I doing, 50 miles an hour? It's talking to me and telling me what the car's doing. When you pitch it into a corner, that initial turning, it's quite firm, but it, it starts to talk to you instantly. You know what's happening with the front wheels. And then you feed the power in, and it's me feeding the power in, my right foot, feeling when I can apply the throttle. The throttle mapping's pretty aggressive in this car, so it takes a bit of time to get used to it. But it's that instant response, and it's got a lot of torque in the in the motor, so it really pull you out of the corner. Stamped your foot on the brake pedal, 
basically the brake pad just becomes a rest to put your foot on while you continue on to the scene of the accident. Janarelli Design 1. Well, unusually, I'm going to give you my final thoughts by facial expression alone. price point you know it feels so special in here it is it is supercar territory for sports car money and, and I just think that's that's just a hugely impressive trip to pull off I'm gonna draw this video to a close I have to say a massive thank you to Alan Gianarelli I reached out to him about a month ago and said look I'd really love to get this car on the channel it's right up my street it's the kind of driver's car that I love to get my hands on and that my followers love and he literally responded back and said you were in my top three car youtuber stroke journalists and we want to get this car into the hands of and that is because you guys give me the massive support and follow me and watch all my videos I'm now getting to the point where um, I can I can hold that amount of credibility and I'm very grateful for it but I'm hugely grateful for Janarelli letting me have the car for the day um, I'm grateful to my mate Jason for helping me do some stills and some tracking video I hope you enjoyed this one if you have done so please give me a thumbs up comments below are always welcome and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come I can't promise you that whatever's coming in the future will be quite as exclusive as this have a look on youtube and see how few videos there are of this car on youtube there aren't many but what an experience anyway i'm going to enjoy my drive back to the farm and i'll see you on the next film guys you take care drive safe